Hello and welcome to The Couch on Zim Papers Television Network, uh, the show that goes deep into some football issues. My name is Howard Msonza and uh, please remember to follow us on our digital platforms. On Facebook, we are Zim Papers Television Network. On YouTube, we are simply ZTN. And on Twitter, we are at ZTN News. That's the big one. And also at The Couch. Well, today on the show, what are we talking about? Well, we are discussing the Qatar 2022 journey, which starts at the beginning of next month with uh, South Africa and Ethiopia matches. And uh, to help us do that, we've got the couch squad as usual. There you are. Huh. Guys, I, I don't know what to say, but um, I feel good. Yeah, well, I know I look good. I don't know about you. No, we do look good. Um, we deserve to look good. But, I mean, before we said, it's a sad day, because uh, whatever happened to George Shire, but we feel good to be here. But condolences uh, to the family of Shire, my Agnes, and everybody in Zimbabwe football. It's sad, but life has to go on. He ran his race. He played his game. The final whistle has been blown, and we believe we need to move on. Hmm. Momo, I can't say anything. Don't I don't say know. Anything. I is, is it don't is that the way you are, you're you're dressing? You you, you are it's, dressed today. It's uh, a four minutes tail, Baba. I think uh, you are now used to this. Eh? We looking good is a hobby. <laughs> when you are dressed by four May. <laughs> yeah, I uh, want to thank Four May. They are our clothing partners. Uh, they always there for the couch squad. Also on the show, we have a guest. And uh, yeah, he's he's done the most, and um, he played for Darrington. Then it was um, yeah, Daring Textiles, Africa United back in the year 2000. Then I went to Poland, where he played for a team called Gornik Zabje. Uh, between 2001 and 2002. Then uh, between 2002 and 2003, uh, he was on the books of Pogon Sheshny. And uh, 2003 to 2013, he played for Legia Warsaw. He also captained the team for about two to three years. And he played in the UEFA Champions League. Let's say hello to our guest, uh, Dixon Choto. How are you, Dixon? I'm good, I want, uh, uh, Also. How are you, Mr. Marco? Hey, Mr. Mo. Mo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, uh, uh, I also want to say hello to, to the viewers, and uh, it's good to be here. Yeah, so we'll be talking to Dixon about his story, and obviously we'll look deep into today's uh, issues that we are looking at. But before we do that, first let's look at the sad news that Makombare was talking about, uh, the death of a Zimbabwean legend, George Shire. He died at the age of 77. So what we did, uh, we spoke to the Herald Sports editor, Colin Matiza, about his impression of uh, George Shire. If I can use the um, old cliche, uh, Zimbabwean football is now poorer. Uh, following the un okay, untimely death of Joshua, although he was at uh, ripe old age of 77. Um, I can equate Joshua uh, with the likes of uh, Brazilian football legend Pele, as well as um, Argentina's uh, Di the like Diego Maradona. Because I still remember in the 70s, in fact, uh, Josh they used to call Joshua the, the, the Rhodesia's Pele. Then our country was still under uh, the Rhodesian government, the regime of Ian Smith. Uh, he is, for, I personally believe, he is the greatest footballer to emerge from Zimbabwe in post and uh, pre and post independence era. Because uh, winning the five, uh, the Soccer Star of the Year award a record five times, it's a phenomenal achievement. It's a remarkable achievement. And he won it, uh, uh, of those five uh, Soccer Star of the Year awards, he won the, the, the last one, the, he won it and uh, he scored a hat-trick. That was in 75, 76 and 77. It, it's an achievement or a feat has never been eclipsed in Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwean football, both during Rhodesia, the Rhodesian time, and during our own post-independence post era in, in Zimbabwe. That's Herald Sports Editor Colin Matiza. We also asked him of the memories that he has of uh, George Shire. For me, George Shire uh, is just the greatest, just like Muhammad Ali in boxing. But Muhammad Ali was the greatest in boxing. And for, for Zimbabwean football, uh, George Shire was the greatest since he's now late. And um, he is he, the calling Mr. Dynamos himself. 
Yeah, he was Mr. Dynamos. And uh, he joined Dynamos when he was a young boy, uh, after having grown up in the, the then dusty roads of Mbari, although they are no longer dusty roads of, of, of Mbari. It was then Harari. And he used to, uh, that I think the second street, the second street and third street, second, second, second street, if not third street in Mbari, near Mbari Musika there. Then before he went to Musami, um, St. Paul's Musani under the legendary coach uh, 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 Father Davis. He played there with the late um, Jawot Nichironga. I think David Madonna was part of the team. But uh, Joe Shire was just a bacon. Yeah, and uh, it's unfortunately uh, that he, uh, our country then, Rhodesia, uh, uh, was under sanctions and uh, he never played, he never had so many national ca team caps. For, for, for Rhodesia because we are under sanctions. Uh, we only used to play against South Africa and we, we, used to, they, we used to call them test matches. But the one I remember vividly was in 1977. Uh, Rhodesia then went to South Africa under coach, um, I think it was Dan McLennan, who also used to coach uh, Chibuku Shumba. That was in 1977. Joshua was on the bench and they lost 7-0. Then uh, for the return test, uh, the then John Mazima led uh, R Rhodesia Football Association, I don't know, that's our Z for now. Uh, they sacked Dan McLean and they appointed um, uh, John Rugg as the um, acting national coach. He made a whole lot of changes. He named Joshua the team captain. Thanks a lot uh, to Colin Matiza, that's uh, Herald uh, Sports Editor, talking about uh, George Shire. Well, at 77, I think he did the most. Um, look, we remember him for um, the five Soccer Star of the Year awards that he got. Uh, it's a pity. I, I don't know. Uh, did anybody here watch him play? But the stories that we have heard about George Shire, he was one of the best. In fact, if he's not the best to come out of Zimbabwe. You look, you know, you'd say in this generation, you say there are no videos and everything. That's fine. But for a guy to be named mastermind, I mean, that should have been huge. And everybody who played with him or against him testifies how good he was. So he's a legend. Mm, and you, um, you know, you, we were talking about you playing most of your football in Poland. And um, you come back. If you go there, they will talk about you because you captained one of the biggest teams in Poland. You played in the UEFA Champions League. But you come here, you know, people will not understand when you tell them about George Shire, but the stories that you have heard, you know, I, I'm sure if there was uh, probably a chance for you to play against him, you would have loved to play against him. Yeah, the, that's true. Uh, also, unfortunately, uh, I, I didn't watch him play because I think I was uh, not yet born or I was still young. Uh, but uh, I had so many good uh, uh, stories about him, and also he's, uh, he grew up in Glenora, where I also grew up. So I think he's also my homeboy, uh, and also for me it's also a, a sad day. Uh, uh, for me personal, I think he, uh, in Zimbabwe we should also try to uh, recognize uh, most of our, uh, our legends uh, whilst they are still alive, not uh, when they are no more. I think that's, uh, so that's yeah. a pertinent point that he's talking about because mm -hmm. uh, many a times we tend now to eulogize, we speak glowingly. Yes, Pane, that Shona, that says Awafawanaka uh, and all that. But uh, as a former player uh, yourself, I I'm sure you, you agree with what Dixon is saying. Let's give due recognition, you know when players are still av uh, alive and uh, not then speak about them when, when they pass on? I think uh, uh, last year and this year has been really bad uh, for former players. You know, we lost uh, Mishek Chizambwa, uh, we lost uh, Mapepa, we lost so many, so many... David Mandukor as well. Yogi, yeah. But um, what, I, what I want to say is, uh, in my heart and in my mind, I have no doubt uh, what uh, this mastermind did for Zimbabwean football. And to me, to the powers that be, I would say he, he really deserves the hero status. He is supposed to go to the hero's acre. If at all we, we are serious and we 
really want to appreciate the work that he did for Zimbabwean football. Yeah. So, yeah, condolences to the Shire family and uh, may his uh, dear departed soul rest in eternal peace. You're watching The Couch right here on Zimbabwe's television network. What are we talking about today? What we are discussing, the Qatar 22, 2022 journey. Yeah, remember, the World Cup is uh, on next year in Qatar. And we are saying, um, as Zimbabwe, you know, the journey has started. And we have seen what the coach has done. Uh, 11. How many matches has he played? 12 matches. 12, 12. 12, <coughs> 12 matches and he has managed to win? One. One, One match. Is he going to change the script? Because the qualifiers start next month. Stay with us here on the couch. Transforming men into gentlemen. You're watching The Couch right here on Zimbabwe's TV network. And uh, yeah, today we are discussing the Qatar 2022 journey for the Warriors. Uh, we've got our coach, uh, Zdravko Logarusic, uh, the Croatian. And uh, yeah, he's been in charge um, He's been in charge of 12 matches. He has won one. And uh, we start the World Cup qualifiers next month. And our first match is against South Africa. Then we go to Ethiopia. Then we play Ghana. Then we go back and play the, the, the teams in the same order. But uh, what's important is, uh, look, we've got a team. And we want to go to the World Cup for the first time. Then after this qualifiers, we've got the Africa Cup of Nations early in 2022. But do we have the right team? So we had the coach, I think about a couple of shows ago, he was here, he spoke about his team. But he says his biggest problem is the defense. Hence, we've brought the man who did the most, you know, marshalling defenses in Poland, in the UEFA Champions League, even for Zimbabwe. He was there when Zimbabwe went for the first Africa Cup of Nations in uh, 2004 in Tunisia. So, Dixon, I'll start with you. What's your impression of the team that we've got in Zimbabwe? I'm sure you, you're familiar. We've got a core team that we've had 2017 Africa Cup of Nations, 20, 2019 Africa Cup of Nations. Even now, you know, the team that's got uh, Knowledge Msona, Kama Biliad, Marshall Munetsi, Kudama Hachi, Ovidi Karuru. That's like the core of the team. What's your impression of that team? Yeah, uh, as for me, I think uh, we've got uh, a good team. Uh, I think he, our problem, our biggest problem is uh, we are also considering some uh, some soft goals. Uh, in in every team, I think the the foundation should be the defense. So if you don't defend well, then uh, I think uh, it's it's a little bit hard. Because at the end of the day, uh, each team, uh, like in, uh, our in, in our own case, as Zimbabwe, we always score. So I think we need to uh, try to. Uh, to 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 change uh, how also we we we, we defend uh, as as, uh, as a nation uh, and also I think for me uh, the problem which is contributing to to that is uh, we are changing uh, too many too many players uh, uh, which is not uh, good uh, as a as a as a nation as a team because. Uh, we also you need uh, know, to to understand each other uh, because if you don't understand each other as a, as a defenders, if you make a mistake, then you you get punished. Mm. So yeah. I, I was looking at the very first time that we went to the Africa Cup of Nations back in two thousand and four, and um, if I remember correctly, uh, there's a game that we were beaten five three yes. by Cameroon. We lost two one to Egypt. Then we beat Algeria 2-1. And uh, fast forward to 27, uh, to, uh, sorry, 20, 2006, we lost 2-0 to Nigeria. We lost 2-0 to Senegal. Then we beat Ghana 2-1. Fast forward to 2017. 
you know, uh, same story. Uh, uh, you know, we we are always conceding. 2019 again, I think that's when we shipped in a, a lot of goals against DRC 4 0. So, has the problem been there all along? Because, yes, you're right, we score goals, but we also ship in a lot of goals. Has this problem, the defensive problem, has, has it been there ever since? Yeah, and uh, I think we need also to address that uh, that issue uh, as soon as possible. Because if we don't address the issue, then we are going to be conceding. Uh, and uh, then we are going to also to lose some matches. Some of them which we are supposed to be easily winning. So I think uh, uh, as for starters, we need to start as now to, to prepare. Uh, the uh, the defenders, not also to to change. Uh, like every game, we have got new defenders, and then uh, uh, you know our international breaks. We have got only uh, little days to to prepare and also to understand each other. So we need uh, th those players. You no, know, who are one? They are playing uh, their uh, respective clubs, and also was good experience because you don't buy experience in such tournaments and, uh, and like uh, World Cup qualifiers. Mm. You need that. So I'll, I'll come to you, um, uh, Macombo Um So I've taken Dixon back to 2004 and I was just looking at the defenders that were there. Dixon was one of them. Kaitano Tembo, Dumisanu Mpofu, Daisy Kapenya, George Mbugando, Charles Yohani, um, even Becky, uh, Becky, Becky and, and Lovu. Uh, you know, they, they were all there. And I see some very big names. And I, I, I think there was one game we played against e Egypt. I think the pace of the game was too much for one Kaitano Tembo. Yeah. That he ended up even handling the ball, you know. Uh, it had been put over him. Yeah. And uh, the, the referee just laughed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because the pace was just too much. Do you concur with what uh, Dixon is, is saying here about the defensive problems that we've always had? Look, I do. I do. It's difficult to argue against a man who has played the game at such a level. But I dare to add that what we do not have are characters at the back. Leaders who call people to order. Howard, you're out of position. Check your man. This is not good enough for Zimbabwe. People who are ready to die for the team. We have guys who just play for themselves. How many times have you seen people arguing in the national team? They don't argue. It's normal. It seems it's more of tough luck. But with Kaitando, with Dixon, even with Norman Mapeza, you know that even after defending, if the ball came from your flank, soon after we defend, I will tell you more, this came from your end. This is not good enough. Let's cut it now. But what you have is a guy who concedes, uh, the last time he conceded an on go teenage Adib, came out and apologized to the nation. It looks good on paper, but big defenders don't do that. They, Sp they don't Spart apologize the or they don't make mistakes? Apologize for what? Okay. Why would you come out and apologize to the news? It's a sign of being soft. You're, you're going to sorry. Lacking character. Lacking character. That gives like a tough luck. Let's go, uh, go ahead. But uh, I just wanted to say, even though we had those uh, kind of defenders uh, before, we still considered. So maybe it may be more than just the defense. Um, from my experience, I would say... Defense is not only those four guys at the back or the three at the back or the goalkeeper and the two, which however you are set at the back. It's everyone. And when you defend, you start from the front. The strikers start chasing. Your wingers tuck in, depending with the formation that you're playing. If you look at our team, we've got people who do not mark. Not knowledge is A workhorse going, up fr going, going forward but coming back. All the guys that we play at the front, they are not so good in defense. So I'm glad. What's your overall impression? I would say um, we, we, we need to uh, learn to defend as a team, not to let defenders defend only. And um, if you looked at uh, the team when Mafero Mafero was there, you'd find that they, they were, there was a lot of pressing starting from the front. They were, they were trying to put up put out something. They were putting a lot of effort in making sure that the ball really does not even come to our end. So with Logger, there's nothing we are just playing. Karma is there, knowledge is there. To know that 
when we don't have the ball, we are all defending, not defenders only. All right, that, that, that's, that's, that's good. You, you have made your point. But now, I, maybe if we knuckle down on this, mm. because in every team, there are strikers, there are midfielders, and there are defenders. And you've got a core duty that you need to perform in any given team. Yes, I understand you need to start defending when you lose the ball. But what is the sole responsibility of somebody who comes in? Um, Dixon is playing as a center half. He's partnering to Misan and Prof. Day. Mm -hmm. What is their job? You've got Charles Yohan playing as a left back. And you've got Edo Bedina playing as a right back. What is their sole responsibility? No, their role is, is to defend. But if their opposition team has got a roving fullback, it means your number 11 needs to follow that man because you'll be overloaded. But I wanted to say, in defense of karma and knowledge, in every team, they're the big boys of the team. Wherever you go, these are the people that we say when we win possession, Marshall Omnes gets the ball at the edge of the box. Who is our outlet? Karma billiard, knowledge and so on. Why? Because they're the people that we believe they cannot lose the ball easily. So, to f I mean, to the for their ben to their benefit, They've earned the right not to give a lot defensively, but they need to be seen to be there. Mm. So there are too many. <laughs> okay. There are too many. If, if we could say Kama does that and knowledge um, does a lot of marking, I would understand. If you've got two or more people not involved in, 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 in defense, there are always going to be problems. There are always going to be problems. You All need to make sure that everybody comes back. So I want, I want to talk to, to you, Dixon, about... Um, your time probably with uh, Leggy also because that's where you kind of, you know, did so well because you played in the UEFA Champions League. We watch the UEFA Champions League, you know, when it's in season because it's more like, uh, you know, the, the premier, you know, when it comes to European football. And now coming back to Zimbabwe, you are being, you called for the national team and you're playing against the team, probably you've got uh, a few days to train together. What were you guys talking about? Because these guys are talking about, you know, playing as a team. Yes, you play as a team, but remember you've got a duty. Dixon has been called, and you're not being called to score goals. Yes, you score, but your primary role is to make sure you don't let in goals. So that transition, you know, from playing against some top players, who have been playing in the UEFA Champions League. You come, yes, I'm not saying Zimbabwe didn't have top players. You had Anapita and Lovu, all those stars. But that, that transition, how was it? Was it the same when you came for the national team? Uh, it was, uh, uh, there was a, a big difference for for me. Uh, I think when I was... Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. no. When, when <laughs> Uh, the, the the way the way they uh, uh, we were preparing for the games uh, I think in Europe and uh, the way we prepare here uh, there was a a huge gap but uh, uh, the fortunate part is uh, like Mago said uh, those days uh, the players had character was the uh, some of the players you know it's it's not about only just to to, to play the ball. They know when to mark, and they know when to uh, to even uh, to play the ball, and uh, you were not allowed to to make some you know, stupid mistakes because those guys they will uh, eat you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> they know how to uh, they know how to win, and also they know their responsibilities in the in the national team. So uh, whenever you are called to national team. You have to be ready, and also the uh, in our days there were too many players, too many good players. So even the coaches, you know, they had a headache to uh, from where to choose. But uh, now we know that we we should have uh, Kama, we should have Musona, we should have uh, Nakamba, Munetsi. If those players they are not there, then uh, I think. Uh, we are starting to have some headaches. Mm. So, uh, briefly, yeah. just coming mm. from your days, Sanakaitano mm. Tembo, Dumisani, Daisy, you played against those guys, yeah. George, uh, yourself, and uh, we fast forward to the guys that also took us to the Africa Cup of Nations, Costa Namenesu, mm. uh, Teenage Hadebe. Uh, 
who probably has impressed you the most on that this is a top defender, quality defender, no nonsense defender. Uh, you know, you respect this guy. I would say uh, Costa, uh, and he, was, he had you know the character. Was also I had an opportunity to to see him play uh, in Poland, so I know I, I know how he uh, he plays and also uh, his approach to games. So uh, in uh, for me, I would say Costa Namene so he had, uh, he had the character uh, for the, like, like the winning mentality. Uh, and also, I think also we've got uh, Darikwa. Uh, I think he's got also uh, the same character. Yeah. Well, do you watch uh, Zimbabwe versus Algeria 2017? Costa, yeah. Aji Mare is coming with the ball. You know, uh, Bekpedla, I think for close to 10 meters, and Mare's scored. <laughs> yeah, but that 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 uh, uh, that happens even to 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 best to, to best defenders in the world. Also, they because <laughs> look, we are <laughs> we are being faced with you know uh, Mari, so that guy you know is uh, unpredictable. So yeah, it, it was uh, one of those moments. Mm. Mm. You're watching The Couch right here on uh, Zim Papers Television Network and uh, we are talking about the Qatar 2022 journey. It starts next month with a match against uh, South Africa. A uh, couple of uh, shows uh, we uh, go with uh, the Zimbabwe coach Zdravko Logarusic and uh, he was also giving us his impressions of the team that he's got. And Makomborero, just to go back, I had asked more this question, his impressions of the team and Mwanga Jungo Zambara. Uh, but that question, mm. what's your impression of the team? Well, I think we have a decent team. Uh, we have a decent team. Uh, like I've always said, the best of, of knowledge in Sony and Kama Billiard, I think we have seen. Um, we're getting into an era where they are probably going the downhill. Um, we have our best, probably one of our leading defensive midfielders, Getting a chance to prove himself marvelous and come and dropping to the bench. We have uh, Tinoka Dewere coming from the bench. All these are issues that we need to, 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 to factor into the final verdict that we're going to say. We don't have a goalkeeper we can trust. We've got one defender left sided, teenage. Alec Mdim is, has just joined the team in Georgia. That tells you how serious or not serious he is about his football. Um, we have Jimmy Zingai who is clubless. These are the factors. So how good is a team do we have? I think we have a decent team. But the good thing is, when these boys play against South Africa, they are determined to win. Whether Lok Garusic or myself is the coach. So that should give us a very good start. Playing at home against Bafana Bafana. They are our cousins across the Limpopo. We know we are better than them. If we start the World Cup qualifiers on a high, and the good thing is soon after we win against South Africa, we are on the flight to Ethiopia. So you're on a high. Hopefully, we get a good start. Mm. So the players that he mentions, Jimmy Zingai, Alec Mudimu, Teenage Hadebe, um, you also have got Tendai Darikwa, Divine Lunga. Would you change anything there? No. Why, why should I change anything? These are the guys that got us there. But they're not playing. Why, they are not playing. Divine, Divine is not playing. Yeah. He, he, he is with Mamelo de Sundowns. Uh -huh. He's failing to break it into okay. the first. Uh, no, he's in fact failing to make it in the, the final 18. Different. And uh, is, you've is, got Jimmy Zingai. Jimmy Zingai is clubless right mm -hmm. now. He's club hunting. Alec Mdimu, he was clubless all along. And mm -hmm. he joined recently a team in Georgia. Teenage mm -hmm. Hadebe, he's uh, playing now in the Major League Soccer in the US. Mm -hmm. And his team has got, um, I think, about five straight defeats. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I want to say is, Howard, I will not change anything because those are the players that we have. Those are the players that are actually doing something in terms of football. Teenage Adib is playing. Whether we are losing or not, it's neither here nor there. Um, Divine, you can't say Divine is not uh, uh, getting into the team. He is always part of the team. He is he's in a new team, in a new setup. He is still trying to, to fit in. It doesn't change uh, the way he, he plays. Um, 
For Jimmy Zingai, I, I don't know what he's doing. I, I would rather have people who are attached to, to teams because I know when you are at a team, you, you are called friendlies, you, you really, you are, you are match fit. But if you are not attached, then it means that maybe you just have physical fitness, but you don't have match fitness. So I would say for our defense, this is the best that we have at the moment. We are not playing any soccer in Zimbabwe. You cannot pick anyone locally. So we are stuck with those guys. And for me, they have put on the show before. I, I, I trust they are going to still uh, play well. Mm. You played the game at the highest level. Is it very difficult probably taking a guy like Munetsi, you put him central defense? Maybe play a guy like Gerald Takwara, put him central defense. I, I don't think uh, I don't think there's a there's a problem because actually or, or you trust uh, these same players that got us <laughs> to where we are today. Jimmy Zinga Alec Mudimu teenage had a divide lunga tendai darikwa. It's okay, let's go like that. Uh, as for me, uh, I've got uh, uh, one, uh, I think one issue on our centre backs because I think for uh, the benefit of, of balance, we can't have two centre backs uh, left legged. It's better to have two centre backs right legged than two centre backs. Hey, explain left this because you know we've tried to debate this <laughs> here. Yeah. I told them before. No, and yeah, I told uh, more, you before. More, more uh, we are it talking is. to Dixon. Okay, more. I told you before, guys. <laughs> yeah. Dixon, just for the record, I told them before these guys. Yeah, but yeah, know that they are hard. Yeah, yeah, I know you're a bad teacher because I'm watching as You know it can't. Why not? Chimira things we see say from, from Dixon because you failed to explain this to us. Uh, you can What's get that the problem? Clip. Because today you've got two cent halves. Uh, for example, you and um, and Dumisan Impov, right legged. But you're playing a center half. Now because we've got Alec Mudimu and Jimmy uh, and Jimmy. Uh, Teenage Hardin, mm. they are both left uh, legged. And we're saying it's a problem. Yeah, no, you know where the problem is, is uh, like you, you already mentioned that uh, when I was playing with Dumisani, Dumisani was right-legged, me I was right-legged. I was right-legged, but also I used also my left. Was I was playing left side, so my left leg was a person who uh, uses more of his right-legged, he can also use left. But a person who uses more left-legged, most of them, they struggle to use their, their right-legged. That's why you see um, uh, most of uh, the time our national team center backs, the left legged, they try is, uh, as much as they can to just twist so that they can use their left legged. And as a center backs, I think uh, it's a, a little bit risky. Mm. No, no, they mm. also they also drift mm, to the left to the most left of the side, times. Yeah. So right, they the don't drift to the no, right. No, no. No, they always oh, the left the left legged guys. I'm you I'm always <laughs> you always find them on both of them. You will leave the center, so the central part of the uh, pitch so without, with, without. Uh, okay, so cup. then, then what do you need? Do you need a goalkeeper who says, "Tixon, Tixon, what are you going to go left foot? What should then happen?" Because if they are the best that we have, and they are left footed, vis-a-vis -vis the need for balance, then can we mitigate that? Because look, I mean, if they are the best, mm -hmm. we might as well take the risk because. I thought then if it was a, about balance, I would think um, if Maris is to come and you're left-footed, he goes to your right, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. But if it means about positioning, then you probably need a leader who says, yeah, yeah. Well, to, st to start <laughs> doing those things of, <laughs> of drifting to the left. But from those, would you add anybody? Is there somebody that we are not talking about, somebody who's been uh, overlooked by the coaches? who will come in and solve that crisis, especially on the centre half that, that you're talking about? Uh, unfortunately, we are, we are not playing now in, in Zimbabwe because I think there's... Uh, I watched uh, one of the centre backs, uh, uh, a guy called uh, Frank. Frank Makarat. Makarat. Yeah, I think he's also a d decent centre back. But unfortunately, in Zimbabwe, we, uh, we are on holiday, so uh, we'll wait for, uh, <laughs> for, for, for another day. Yeah. You're watching The Couch right here on uh, Zim Papers Television Network. And uh, our topic for today, Qatar 2022 um, journey starts uh, at the beginning of uh, September with a game against South Africa. And we're looking at, um, well, the script that probably Loga has to, 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 to come up with so that uh, we...
qualify for the World Cup for the first time. Stay with us. Watch on the couch right here on Zimbabwe's television network uh, and today we've got a guest in studio he played the UEFA Champions League he captained Legia also for about two to three years in uh, Poland and uh, well there's talk you explained that to us that um, he was supposed to go to Arsenal and uh, uh, I may not even <laughs> the, village <people. laughs> the village people <laughs> Where it work and uh, you got injured, and uh, Fabianski uh, found himself going to to London to to join Arsenal. Yet Arsene Wenger had sent scouts to to look at you uh, for the <coughs> one last time, and uh, boom, Dixon <laughs> was injured. Yeah, I know that's uh, uh, the unfortunate part. I, I think he, it's one of them was uh, it, uh, six six of those. Oh, yeah. And I had six operations, so uh, I think you might uh, call it Mazinza. <laughs> 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 yeah, that one on that uh, <coughs> on that instant, uh, they would send some scouts. I think for seven times to watch me play, and uh, they wanted to also to watch me the last time. And uh, unfortunately, uh, when we play friendly against Arsenal was they had bought uh, Fabianski, so uh, in the contract uh, there was an agreement that uh, Legia was supposed to play Arsenal. So on that match they were supposed to watch me play. So we had a game on uh, the previous weekend, uh, then uh, I got uh, I got a put muscle, so I couldn't play. <laughs> but uh, I had to meet the men and uh, uh, luckily for me, and uh, unfortunately for Mo, because I know he supports Arsenal. <laughs> <and>, uh, <laughs> I got to meet the the guy. Yeah. So, and I also had uh, <coughs> a Celtic Glasgow. Uh, when I was supposed to go there, I got injured again. Then I had an operation, uh, and also when I got a call up uh, to national team. I heard most of the people, they said Dixon uh, doesn't want to come for national team. But you uh, didn't want to come? No, no, no. Two, two of those invitations, they came uh, whilst I was uh, coming out of uh, theatre. So people couldn't understand that you know, I got injured and I uh, got operated. But you know, that, uh, that's what that's it is. That's the unfortunate situation. <laughs> yeah, that's like. what it is, uh, like Archita said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, we, we, we are talking about um, uh, the, the national team and in the impending matches, the World Cup qualifiers, you know, uh, South Africa, there is Ethiopia, we are in the same group with Ghana as well. And uh, there might be a bigger problem than what we are talking about because we are looking at, guys, the, the defense. Mm. But uh, what we did, we spoke to Warriors general manager, um, who's also the senior team um, manager, Wellington Pandare. 
and uh, he indicated that they have delayed the announcing of the final squad because of the uncertainty in availability of uh, some players, especially those who are based in the UK. Well, um, we're supposed to announce the team last week, uh, but unfortunately we could not do that because we're having challenges with the um, uh, England-based players where the clubs are not certain what, on what's going to happen to their players when they, when they go back. Because remember, that when they go back, they will, need to go back in, uh, they will need to go into quarantine for 10 days, and that would mean those players would miss up to two games, some three games. So, yeah, we're waiting on a position from FIFA on how they're going to advise this club to, um, to handle these issues. So as far as we're concerned, we won't be announcing the squad until we get a proper feedback from FIFA. So yeah, this is uh, what's, what's going on. Uh, South Africa announced their squad, I think last week. Ghana also did the same, Ethiopia did the same. And we are yet to announce our squad because of uh, this uh, conundrum that we have found ourselves in. And uh, the manager, Mpandare, also gives a hint on Marvelous Nakamba, Tendai Dariko, and Jordan Zemura, who may not make it. There are quite a number of players, more than five players who are supposed to come from, from the UK. And we, we worried, we've been talking to Bournemouth, and um, so even the players have been in touch with them. We worried that these players might not make it to, um, for, for this game. But the French-based players I have confirmed they are coming. But we are worried about those England-based players and uh, chances of them coming 50-50. Uh, like I said, we'll just wait on FIFA. Um, maybe they will come up with a position uh, where there could be an agreement between the FA and their government to release these players so that when they go back, they don't go into quarantine. So Mpandare was uh, in um, Cameroon recently for the Africa Cup of Nations finals draw. And uh, he had the opportunity to look at where the Warriors will be uh, staying, you know, for, you know, logistics purposes, for the tournament. And um, this was his conclusion. Yes, um, on the 18th after the draw, uh, we flew to um, the city where we're going to be based, the four teams, that is us, Malawi, Senegal, and Guinea. Um, the distance is about 70 kilometers away from the main pitch, that is from the hotel to the main pitch. And uh, officially they say it takes about one hour, 35 minutes. Uh, but when we then inspected the roads, it's so narrow and very bad and it's mountainous. And it takes about um, two hours for a bus to get to the stadium. And um, we worried about that. And we have raised that uh, with uh, CAF. And I don't know if they're going to change the venue, but that's what it is. We're sharing the same hotel with Malawi and we're not very happy with the hotel as well. But unfortunately, there are no hotels that side. It's very unfortunate because this is nothing to do with uh, any team being favoured because it's what the draw uh, came up with. So we'll see how it goes. That's Warriors General Manager Wellington Pandari uh, just uh, talking to us about uh, uh, various issues that's got to do with the team. You know, Africa Cup of Nations, uh, oh, sorry, World Cup uh, qualifiers, then Africa Cup of Nations. So the first issue, we were talking about our defensive frailties. And um, Pandare now comes in, he says, yeah, you guys are talking about that, but there's an impending problem, you know, because of the COVID situation, Marvelous Nakamba, Jordan Zemura, all those players that are in the UK might not even make it. Tendai Darikwa might not, Macaulay Bone might be called because we don't know what the, the team is going to be like. So how big of a problem is this if we don't have Marvelous Nakamba, we don't have Tendai Darikwa, we don't have Jordan Zemura? It's huge. It's, 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 it's a titanic, it's a train smash, isn't it? Um, because we've just given you the background of having our regular players not playing regularly. But then it is what it is. Uh, we have to find a way. Now, to say we are delaying to announce the squad because FIFA haven't hinted, I mean, it's, it's the, the most lamest of excuses. Just announce an enlarged squad card and say if in the event that these guys do come, these guys will be dropped. For the sake of clarity and planning, South Africa knew that this could happen, but they announced the squad. What would be, stop, what would be stopping you now to, to, to announce the squad? Give the hint and see where it's going. Or is it that the coach wasn't here for the longest of time? It visited uh, Croatia once again. I, I just wanted to find out from Marco, why do you want to know the squad? Do you want the squad to be announced to you? 
<laughs> do, you, do you think the players that are supposed to come don't know? The team manager has already communicated with the players that are supposed to come, which is the most important thing. If you know you're being called up for that, that's the most important. Why should you, Howard, know? Why do you want to know? Why, wha what are you going to do about it when you know? Let's ask Dixon so first. Yeah. Then me and Marco yeah. will come in and, and, yeah, and say but our two cents. There's no... There's the real issue is, if they are not allowed to come, then there is an issue there because we need Darikwa. He's the captain of his team. He's been playing very well. You know, uh, we would miss out on those players in, in the UK. But for the announcement, come on, guys. You, there is nothing. Wh what do you want to know about the team? Is the squad announcement important? Uh, the first thing we should know is uh, how, uh, how many weeks uh, do we need to notify the clubs mm. for the collapse? Because also uh, we might have a scenario where the clubs will say uh, you are late. Because most of the clubs, the, they, they have got the right, if you don't notify you know, them early, that you are going to call this player and, the, and that player. And for me, I don't see any problem for, for the manager or the coach to call an, uh, large a, a, a large squad so that when we, we have that issue of uh, traveling and so on, we can just, uh, just cut down you know, the, the numbers because the COVID, COVID is here and uh, we don't even know what uh, tomorrow brings because maybe tomorrow they're going to say they're allowed or they're not allowed. So if you wait uh, for the UK government or another government, I think we, we, we might be late. Mm. I think it's just uh, good just to announce also for the supporters because uh, they are curious to know uh, who is coming, who, who is not. Was also if you announce uh, the players, I think three days before the camp, also uh, there's going to be also another backlash. So it's just better to just announce the squad. So whoever comes, comes. Whoever doesn't, doesn't. Are you, are you answered? No, I'm not answered. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> don't, I, do, I don't need an answer. You know, you know, you guys, where you what, what you're focusing on is not is not the correct thing. The team manager has already communicated with the clubs. All he needs is clarity from FIFA if they are going to be allowed or not. And the players have already been communicated with. The players that are coming, they know. You, all you want is for the team manager to tell you who is coming so that you can start uh, saying whatever you want. That's our job. Yeah. yeah. No. You, you can do it three, why, days, why? three days before the game why starts. Why did South but Africa players, announce their squad uh, last week? Why did Ghana yeah, announce yeah, we the, are not, the, the we week are not, before that? Howard, we are not South Africa, we are Zimbabwe. Uh. We are not South Africa. We do things the way we want. <laughs> I, I don't see anything wrong. Why do you want to? What are you going to add ah. if you know the squad? We are going to talk about the players. Then what? And then, uh, what? then talk about the omissions. The, the, the Maybe they will call somebody. The technical, team, the technical team already knows the players that are coming or the players they want. So what are, what, are you, what are you doing there? What am I doing? What? Yes, where you're sitting. I'm, I'm waiting for the team to come. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the team to come. You the team is there. You defend these Zifa guys. Girl. I'm, I'm I won't be surprised if you get a job there. Because you, you defend something that is like inexcusable. Is the Zifa president? No. One day? No. You want to be the general I manager? Want, I don't want to be the Zifa president. I don't want to be the general manager. But I, I don't want to blame Zifa when they haven't done anything wrong. Hmm. So There's quickly, before we, we, we wrap up. We've got South Africa next, uh, early next month. Um, and um, Makom Barero says we have to win that game. And the players are highly motivated just by that fact that we are playing against South Africa. How important or how crucial is a win against South Africa as we journey towards Qatar 2022? It's very important because uh, one is for confidence uh, boosting, number one. Number two, uh, as Mago said, uh, they are big brother or our young brother, I don't know which one. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, our cousin, <laughs> yeah. Also, there's pride. Yeah. Uh, or pride on, uh, on that match. Uh, this starts even uh, before. So whoever wins uh, has got uh, the breaking rights. So 
I think the, our players, uh, they know that. Uh, as also most of our players, they play in South Africa. They've got also their colleagues there. So, you know, in their changing rooms, you know, the banter has been you know, flying around. So they want to win so that, you know, the, uh, until, the, until their next matches, uh, they've got the breaking rights. So I think uh, I, I concur with Marco that uh, uh, we should win. Mm. What happened to, to DC Academy? Is it still there? Uh, this academy is there. Are you are you molding defenders just like uh, how you mold? <laughs> yeah, uh, how, me I was molded at uh, Legacy's uh, Juniors. Uh, I think also more many people, uh, many many people they don't know that I played for S S Juniors, and uh, that's where I was taught uh, some of the football uh, I play. Uh, I don't know if it's good or not, but I was taught there. Go grab uh, those guys over there. Grab was, uh, was from under 13, 15, and 17. I played for Blegasis, uh, when where I was coached. I was coached by Expense Tukutuku. Then I went to play for uh, Unique Select, which was mm -hmm. playing Division One. And uh, we were being coached by uh, Nyoka, <laughs> the famous Nyoka. <laughs> yeah. Then I played there for one year. The the following year, that's uh, when Grabos uh, took me to Darinti. Then the following year, I was uh, I was in Poland, but also I also thank everybody who uh, played this part, and uh, including Mr. Grabos, he taught me some some of the techniques, was that's his specialty. Mm. Yeah. Dixon Chota, former Zimbabwe international, thanks so much for coming to the couch. Yeah, thanks, um, uh, thanks, Mr. Howard, and uh, thanks to viewers, and also Mr. Mark and Mr. Moore. <laughs> Just to put you on the spot before <laughs> you go. Um, so during Generation Yenui, who is the, the best player to have come out of Zimbabwe from the, uh, your time up until now? My time. Uh, because me, I played with uh, other players than me. Then mm. uh, I would say uh, Peter and Love. Uh, for me, uh, he was uh, a great player and a great leader. Okay. Thanks so much uh, for watching The Couch and The, the Couch Squad, as, as usual. Um, he's waiting for, <laughs> for yeah, this. Yeah, I'm, for I'm waiting. For the squad. Have, yeah, I'm waiting. You I'm, don't, I'm waiting you don't mind whether it's three days before. All I know is that we're going to beat South Africa and get a, a result in Ethiopia then. We go and beat Ghana and then we... we so for we the go. first time we'll qualify? We'll qualify. Defensive problems? No, the team is going to defend. It's not defense only. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for, for coming through. It's always a pleasure having Bo and, and Malcolm Borel on, on the couch. So next week, we're back again, same time, here on Zim Papers uh, Television Network. Don't forget, COVID is real. Mask up, sanitize, and social distance. Thanks so much to our partners for me for dressing us. We are always looking good. My name is Howard Msonza. Thank you very much for watching.